To take a look at how Nigeria can build its testing capacity, we are being joined via Skype by Dr. Kasmil Ifani, Publicity Secretary, Association of Medical Lab Scientists of Nigeria. Thank you, Dr. Kasmil, for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. And how are you doing this morning, Doctor? I'm cool. Um, I am uh, somewhere in a suburb area in the FCC. How would you assess the COVID-19 testing capacity in Nigeria compared to its population? Uh, well, the, um, the testing capacity, I can tell you we are doing uh, not very pretty good because we have capacity for more than what we are currently doing. And um, unfortunately, uh, it is because we are engaging wrongly. The tests we are doing is such that um, we have adopted the one as approved by the WHO, which is uh, a molecular-based testing. And we are doing um, that. But when we started out, we had uh, barely five laboratories with capacity to provide testing in that regard. And uh, as of today, we have uh, about 22 laboratories with capacity in that uh, respect. Unfortunately, we are underutilizing the capacity because we have only done about 22,000 tests um, in the last three months. Up until April, uh, early April, I mean, uh, early April, it was just uh, uh, below 6,000. And uh, as of now, it is 22,000. What that has shown is that a number of labs have increased, but the capacity utilization of the labs are still very low. And um, for instance, on the 5th of May, the record, the data put out by NCDC showed that they could only process 1,698 uh, samples, meaning less than 2,000 per day. Whereas they have now activated, according to Dr. Chukwe Kazo, the DGN CDC, they have activated the Roach Covers testing machine that is through daily throughput is about 5,000. So why are we still trailing behind? And in places like Lagos, we yet have backlog of uh, unprocessed samples. As at uh, 48 hours ago, uh, in Lagos, we had well over 2,500 samples unprocessed. And several states have sent samples and they are yet to get results. Sometimes it takes a lag of more than seven days, even trailing almost into a fortnight, before results for samples submitted uh, become available. That is not a, a very good uh, performance. Honestly, smaller countries are doing a lot better. Even though when you say that the DGN CDC will interject that uh, he's not into a game of numbers, and uh, he need to be told straight that indeed we're into a game of numbers. We pride ourselves as having a population of well over 200 million. And so if we have a population of well over 200 million, and we have the enormous resources available to us in this country, we should do a whole lot more than what we're doing presently. So I am personally not satisfied that we're still trailing behind in testing. And the reason I'm not satisfied is that I continue to insist that we have enormous human resource. It is not rocket science to deploy real-time PCR to test for COVID-19. It is not a okay science to deploy the uh, uh, COVAS SARS-CoV-2 testing approved by the uh, WHO for testing. So I am really worried, what is the disconnect? The disconnect is that we're very frugal with our approach, with our recruitment, with human resource engagement to ramp up testing. Now, Dr. We Dr. can Kasmil. put two for yeah, seven. Dr. Kasmil. Yes. Yeah, a few days ago, yes. th there was a report on the shortage of reagents and other important materials needed in tackling a health emergency like COVID-19. What do you think brought about this kind of development? Uh, yeah, that is understood because there's a, uh, a heightened global demand for the testing kits. It's not only uh, our laboratories in Nigeria that have need of the kits, but it simply means that we have a very frail, weak, non-existent logistic supply chain system. If we had a robust logistics supply chain system, we will not got, got stuck and got stuck out. Because how many test units did you order ab initio? And if you do that, as you continue to deplete your stock, 
a real uh, uh, an expertise in logistic chain and stocking would know when to place order. You do not place order when you run out of the item. That is the wrong time to place an order because when you get to a mean volume in your stock, you place order. Order, particularly when you know that there's a, a heightened demand for that particular product. All right, doctor, Besides, now, now, what doctor, are we doing? Yeah. Uh, yes? Just finish your thought. Finish your thought there, please. What are we doing at beaming the satellite uh, on in-country capacity for producing some of these items so we do not run cap in hand? Right. I'll give you an example, a ready one for that matter. Japan developed a, 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 what we call a an in-house keeping uh, protocol for testing for COVID. All they made sure was that it was a molecular-based testing uh, uh, technology that they deployed, what we call nucleic acid amplification technology, NAT. And I want to also tell you that we are working as a professional group, and as I speak with you now, we have come up with what can be a stopgap measure. In every state of Nigeria, we have the traditional thermocycler. And we have gone ahead to develop a protocol that can enable us to deploy this. It's okay. also a molecular test. All right. Technique. All right. Now, doctor, should, should there, shouldn't there yeah. be a move to consider homegrown solutions? Like you were rightly pointing out when you were speaking earlier and investing in local production of these reagents and other materials. Yeah, that is what we're saying. Yeah. Now, the GTF COVID continue to meet. Let me tell you, the clinical conversation around COVID must cease. It, what the conversation that should be had and heightened is the conversation of going through our population to say those who have it and those who do not have. For those who have, you now commence the clinical conversation around them. That is what we have not done. 